And joining us in studio is Black Management Forum Deputy President Dumisane Mbafa. Thanks so much, Dumisane, for your time. Of course, the BMF has been calling for the rights of black people to occupy spaces of influence, the echelons of power. Just reflecting back, uh, where would you place your progress uh, on a scale of uh, 0 to 10? Thank you, uh, and Good evening, um, and thanks for having us. Um, <clears throat> It's, 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 uh, it's, a, it's, it's a very interesting journey uh, that we have had in the last 40 years. We're celebrating 40 years uh, this year. We have achieved a lot uh, in the policy front. We've influenced a lot of policies, your BE, your employment equity. Uh, but we equally are aware that in terms of actually achieving actual transformation, we have not uh, moved that far as a country. And uh, as BMF, we have not stopped making noises uh, and, and challenging both the corporate SA together with the uh, government in terms of uh, driving transformation. But on a, if we were to put a scale, um, uh, uh, well, if you look in terms of uh, you know, uh, the policy, I will say at a policy level and advocacy work that we've been doing as a BMF, uh, I, could, I could give ourselves uh, aid, of course, a space for improvement. But in terms of the actual impact of that, then I think we're sitting at two. Yeah, but I mean, if, if you were to look at just the changing the complexion of uh, management, executive management, even at a CEO level, the inroads that BMF has made, I suppose it's still very, very much at middle management, lower management, and uh, the what you're looking for is is at the top of the echelon of that, power. That's exactly because you see uh, in, in corporate, in fact everywhere, uh, the tone is set at the top. So if you get the top right, if you get the top. To you know, to drive transformation, and if you get the right people at the top, then we'll be able to drive transformation. And in fact, um, uh, we we you know we we picking up that you know uh, the top executives have absolutely no interest in driving transformation. And and we have a study we committed a, stu a commission a study as a BMF transformation parameter, which actually one of the key findings of the study was that uh, transformation is actually bad by top management. And, and for us, is that if we are to drive this transformation, we need to make sure that we do something about the top management. If we don't do anything about top management, we can forget about driving transformation. But, but why is transformation not seen as a business imperative? It's as good as corporate governance and ensuring, you know, because it's not just about profits. It is about the balance of people, environment, and we all thrive in that. Or is that too idealistic? Well, it is. Uh, with hindsight, we've learned that. Initially, we've thought that everybody will simply understand the, the logic uh, in, in thriving transformation. But the reality of the situation is that corporate SA has made more money in the new South Africa than they have ever made uh, in, 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 in the previous uh, uh, apartheid government. And for them, this transformation that we talk about doesn't really matter to them. Uh, and, and, and they don't feel the pressure both. Uh, from government in terms of in, you know, uh, in insisting on them or putting punishment or whatever measures they were to put to drive transformation. So there's no pressure. So we feel that you know, um, uh, there's, there's this uh, uh, anti-transformation sentiment that is growing up in, 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 in the private sector. And I mean, uh, there's a study that um, you know, was, con was, 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 was conducted by the IOD. You know, uh, they're looking at their members. Uh, they call it Director Sentiment Index. And they ask what economic factors are impacting your business. And, and, and they listed the top three of those, they listed BE as a, as, a, as a negative constraint to their business. Now, if you have corporate say, seeing BE as a risk to their business, what chance are we that we will ever get to? But this just requires a paradigm shift. And I mean, we've spoken with uh, economic analysts saying that there is that trust uh, deficit and also a leadership vacuum where co uh, corporate South Africa, as you were saying, they're entrenched in the economy. They've been doing this for 300 years, if not more. And there is nothing that compels uh, the white monopoly, as it's, it's called, to really transform. You know, they'd rather take penalties here and there, as we've seen in the uh, construction sector. So in that kind of space, so how do we expect there will be a paradigm shift if there's one, a lack of trust? Secondly, there's also a leadership vacuum or deficiency. You, you're quite correct, uh, Cindy. It's, it's a very complex one. Uh, but we can never stop, uh, you know, uh, uh, trying it and, and insisting. And, and this is why we have this conference, so that we can explore uh, different uh, 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 measures and options. And one of those, we're saying maybe um, as champions of transformation, we have not been able to educate our society in terms of the value and importance uh, of transformation. So that's our starting point. But also we say at a policy level, we need to be very clear 
uh, in terms of uh, uh, the incentives, because we need to align the objective of Corporate SA with that of transformation. But also we need to be very clear in terms of the, you know, uh, the, the punish, uh, punishment uh, where you know, we see any transgression. But also when there's fronting, we need to deal with fronting uh, uh, effectively. So if you're going to change the behavior, because in issue of changing the behavior, if you're going to change behavior, you have to have a clear you know, a, 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 a list of activities that you're going to engage in to ensure that you either force people or incentivize them to behave the way that, that you want them to behave. Yeah. I mean, let's just go to the whole um, supplier chain value system because we know, again, government is the provider of big business and they're lucrative projects that one can tap into that will realize the uh, 100 black industrialist program, let alone uh, advancing uh, transformation in the sector. There's also the issue of capacity on the side of SMEs or black business not collaborating, not having the... Uh, the muscle, if you will, to execute those projects. And by law, uh, in procurement, you have to satisfy all those boxes or, or scorecards. Mm. So you're fighting against the policy system on the one hand side, and the other side, uh, a, a sheer lack of interest from business, perhaps. What is the magic wand? What is required here to move things forward? That's, that's very interesting. In fact, this is, we approach this twofold. The first one is that we, we have realized that as black business people, as black people in general, we do not support each other. Um, uh, uh, we've got so much buying power amongst black people that if we're to use that buying power in, in a way to influence transformation, we'll be able to get uh, a corporate SA on their knees. They'll be begging for our business, but black people don't ever speak with one voice. That's another area. The other area, as you correctly articulated it, is this area of government. Government is one of the biggest consumer of goods and services. To what extent has government used its buying uh, power in the last few, uh, 22 years, they've been in power to influence transformation. My assessment is that they have not been uh, using it that uh, effectively. There's a lot that we can improve. Even with the triple PFA that we've been talking about, it's a sort of disempowering uh, 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 black businesses. You compete with white businesses, they search your work easily because of the system, because of the procurement system that we've, we've, we've put out. So one of the arguments that we're putting out is that let's fix the procurement system so that we can be able to use that buying power effectively, you know, without discriminating anybody, but use that buying power effectively so that you can actually, you know, empower and uplift uh, uh, black businesses. Yeah, the president did say he repeals the triple PFA and um, are you confident that this will materialize at, uh, or cascade at least to levels where it matters? Look, uh, we were quite excited when the president made the announcement uh, yesterday uh, that they will repeal the triple PFA. Um, we have been at this uh, for a very long time arguing with government to say they must repeal this. For now, it's just an announcement at a, at a high level. Uh, we'll await uh, and see uh, the final document that will come out from Treasury in terms of if they repeal it, because they're going to repeal it, and the president indicated that they're going to come with the public procurement uh, legislation. We do not know what's going to come out, so we don't want to celebrate that yet until we've actually seen the document. But that legislation uh, needs to go. Okay. Just before we let you go, there's a conference coming up early October uh, to celebrate your 40th. Can you believe it? BMF yeah. is 40 years old. Lawton Dovo was your first president. Who was the first president? Our, our first president was uh, Eric, Eric Mafuna. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and there's a whole range of other presidents that followed from there. And, and Lawton Dovo was one of the, the late, president, yeah. uh, you know, the late Lawton Dovo. Out of the, all the presidents of BMF is, is uh, you know, uh, Don Mukwanaze and, and, and Lawton Dovo who have since uh, uh, passed on. But those were the great uh, leaders. Uh, they led us. Uh, and, 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 and we're carrying on, 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 on what they've been, they've been doing all these years. It's been... Uh, 40 glorious years, uh, and, and we're celebrating these years as a PMF, but also we're saying we need to produce a blueprint for the country to say how do we, how do we transform this, uh, this society, how do we make sure that ownership is the point where we start, because if you don't start with ownership, because owners appoint directors and directors appoint the executive, so if we don't deal with the ownership, we're not going to be able to impact uh, uh, transformation significantly. So on the 5th and the 6th, we've got the conference, we invite uh, anyone who might be interested in, 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 in issues of transformation and BE to be part of that conference, an open conference, they can get in touch with the office of the BMF. And uh, on Friday, we'll have our AGM. And of course, um, as always, every year, we have a, a gala dinner where we award student chapter of the year, young professional of the year. The gala dinner will be on Friday evening. Okay, and tickets are available. 
tickets are available for those who want to pr get those tickets and they can get in touch with the office. All right. So we really appreciate it, Dumisani Mbafa, uh, uh, BMF Deputy President. And it's the 5th and the 6th the venue? The venue is Galaga Estate. Galaga Estate, that's uh, the 5th and the 6th of October. Go to bmf.co.za for more details if you're interested in business, a budding entrepreneur, startup. If you're just concerned about issues of transformation to prosper this nation, you can go to their website.